Hi everyone, this is Heather Smith with Storyville Photography and today I want to talk to you about frequency separation. Now I know it sounds super fancy and intimidating, but I promise it is actually quite simple. Basically, frequency separation is just a technique that allows you to edit textures and colors separately. It is commonly used in retouching because it helps blend skin tones and doesn't affect the texture, which is really great. And it is very, very handy when it comes to getting rid of like baby acne on newborn photos or say you just love this image of your kid but they have like a dirty face or like paint on it. This is a really good way to get rid of it without affecting um, the skin textures and making them plastic like. So I made this PS action for you guys to make it really, really easy. And I'm going to walk you through it on this picture of my handsome hubby because yes, you can use it on men too. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of zoom in on his face because that's really where I'm going to be working. And I'm going to show you the before and then the after with the frequency separation. As you can see, his tones on his skin like blended together really nicely and we lightened up his dark circles. And I also took care of a couple problem areas with his skin texture and he still looks like a real person. So walking over to the action, um, I like to personally start with a low frequency and I put in parentheses a color because this is going to be the layer that helps blend your skin tones and make them look all nice. And then the high frequency is the texture um, <clears throat> and that's only going to affect the texture when we're on that layer. And you're going to want to make sure to have the current layer selected so you're not going to be working on like the layer below or all the layers. You want just the current layer. So anyway, for the low frequency, we're going to be using the lasso tool and Gaussian blur. And then for the high frequency, we'll be using the clone stamp. So one more quick before and after before we get started. So I'm going to just completely delete the work I've done here. And we are going to replay the action. You're going to want to make sure you are working on your background layer or it's not going to work. Um, so flatten your image if you already have layers out or do this before you edit, um, you know, really get into your major editing. So I'm going to collect the free, collect, select the frequency separation and hit play. And it did all the work for you. And it's really, really wonderful. So as I said, I like to start with the color first. Um, you can totally do the texture first. It's just a personal preference. And I'm going to come over here and grab the lasso tool. And I'm going to first just hit under his eyes. And then if you want to hit the Q, it's going to show you how much it feathers. Um, you want a pretty good feather going. And you can uh, adjust it here as high or as low as you want. Because you don't want rough edges where it will be really noticeable that you applied some Gaussian blur. And that feathering looks good to me. Again, you can change it right here. And then you wanna to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And if you see, I actually have a shortcut. So I made it really simple by creating a shortcut. I should actually show you how to create a shortcut really quick first. All you have to do is go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and then you can add the shortcut you want if you don't already have one for the Gaussian blur. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so anyway, as you can see here, my shortcut is Command Q. So I'll be going back and using that. Uh, it just makes it really quick and easy. From here, you can determine how much blur you want. So if you go too high, you'll notice it just looks really wonky and just gets really dark and gross. So you want to find a happy medium and you can either keep it at the same radius throughout the whole skin um, process because you're going to be sampling different sections at a time or you can change up the pixels if you want like a little bit more um, in certain areas or not as much in others. So for this eye um, or circle, I think I like it at about 27%. That looks good to me. And then Command-D is my shortcut to deselect it. And then I'm going to come over here and do the other eye. And my shortcut was Command-Q, so I'm going to press that. Yours might be different, or like I said, you might not want have one at all, but I highly recommend creating one for this process because it makes it super easy and quick. And that looks good. And then I'm going to come over here and just kind of do his T area.
I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. I want a teeny bit more shine. That looks good to me. I'm gonna blend in here a little bit. And again, depending on the area, um, you might need to change up the feathering throughout here and there, but I'm happy with what I have going on. Everything looks like it's blending nicely and no distinct lines. Come over here. Very subtle differences, but it makes such a huge impact in the overall um, retouch. So, I, and you can always go back after you play around with the texture layer. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because I'm just kind of showing you how it works, but that's the before and after with just the blending of the colors. If you ask me, it makes all the difference. Crazy, crazy. Okay, so moving on to the um, high frequency, grab the clone stamp, and you can also play with the opacity here. Like if you want to completely remove like this wrinkle here, you could sample skin and it will be gone. But for that little wrinkle, I just love it because it's part of my husband, right? But we want, if we want to lighten it up a little, then that is okay. I would do it at about 54% and just kind of run over it and lighten it up. Now for here, his cute little pimple on his eyebrow, we're going to raise that to 100%. And I'm sure he will appreciate this, guys. And voila, it is gone. Looks like he has another little guy over here and gone. And he has like a couple of little scars there. Gone. Bam. So easy. And he was wearing some sunglasses, as you can see, kind of like little dents and coloring, discoloring there. So while you can work on the coloring too with that. I found it easy to just kind of blend the texture. Boom, that looks really great to me. Now up here he has some pretty noticeable pores so I'm just gonna sample a little skin over here and you're gonna have to keep resampling or like say I wanted to come over here and just run it all the way down, you'll get some like eyebrow thing going on. See, it kind of moves with you. We don't want that. So you'll be resampling as you go and moving along. Maybe just get rid of a couple of those guys over here. And that looks really good to me. You can also kind of fill in face hair with the texture a little bit. So if you just wanted to sample an area that had a little bit more and it kind of helps fills it in. Also, I don't always use this technique for this um, purpose, but it might be helpful for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you. You can use it on clothing or something that you wanna get a wrinkle out or straighten out. Just grab the lasso tool, make sure on your, you're on the color, and then just kind of circle what you want straightened out. Gaussian blur, and you can turn it up as high as you want or as low. And boom, that kind of just made the wrinkle so much more subtle. And you can come in there also with the clone stamp and really get rid of it completely if you want. I would be here all day trying to take care of my husband's shirt because there's some lint on there. We were traveling and it just didn't, I think it was next to a sweater. And yeah, so I'm not going to spend time on that, but you know, you can also do arms and skin. Um, well, obviously skin. You can do arms, whatever you want. I'm going to show you how that birthmark can go away, but I'm going to keep it because it's cute. Right, babe? <laughs> uh, there's one more little area that's kind of standing out to me right here. So I'm going to just grab my t clone stamp and make sure I'm on the high frequency and just kind of run over that area. Boom! And that looks great to me. So here we go. This is the before and this is the after the frequency separation action. 
So thanks for following along, guys. You can find this action on my website at www.storyphilipphotography.com. Have a great day. Bye.